This has been a long time coming, but I have finally finished the new house for my Nightmare Legacy Challenge. You might have seen this Let's Play on my YouTube channel. It's The Sims with the Robot. I've been playing with this family for a few years now, and we're on the 11th generation of a Legacy Challenge. I have lovingly named it the Nightmare Legacy Challenge because we play on short lifespan, and also everything seems to always go wrong in this save. And you won't be surprised to know that the same thing applied to this build. I swear, I think this build was cursed, but we'll get into that. Part of the reason this build took me so long is because it's actually four builds. I really like the idea of this multi-generational style gameplay, but I just don't have enough space in one household to have all of the sims there. So what I did is build four townhouses to have my sims live in one, maybe their parents in another, their brother and his kids in one of them. And that way we can have the whole family living close by, but not actively in my household, so I don't have to control them. So let's just jump straight into this because we have a lot of building to do. I'm warning you right now, I am looking at 30 minutes of sped up footage, and that's just one of the houses. I actually cut out the furnishing of the other three because the video was like two hours long. This took me like three and a half days to finish. I did live stream the entire thing. If you want to go back and watch like the full process of making all these builds, I can link the videos where I re-uploaded the streams down below. I post all of my live streams on my second channel called More Simsy, so you can watch like 10 hours of this build if you desired. You don't have to do that though. I'll show it to you here and then give you a tour at the end so you can get a little quick version of it. And even then, it's not a quick version. This is a long video. So obviously it took a long time just because it's big. But when I tell you I had so many issues with this build, I swear the game was out to get me with this one. So the first day I go to start working on it on stream, I go live, everything's fine. I'm talking to chat. I'm opening my advent calendar. My entire PC dies. Whole computer freezes, breaks, blue screens. I was live <laughs> on Twitch and it's just gone. And then I couldn't get it to turn back on. So I had to get Dan to leave his stream and come help me fix it. It was a whole thing. But then I'm back. It's going okay. We're building. I've spent a couple hours building. I start furnishing one of the bedrooms and then my game crashes. See, that's annoying, but normally it would be fine because you saved, right? No, I didn't. <laughs> I hadn't saved in 35 minutes, which I guess in the grand scheme of things isn't that long, but I had furnished two bedrooms in that time. So I had to go back and redo them. It's just like all this sort of stuff kept happening. The game just kept having problems. My computer kept having problems problems. Obviously, rental residential lots, at least at the time that I built this, were very laggy. They claim to have fixed that in an update a few days ago. I don't know if you all saw, but there was a small hotfix for a couple major bugs on Thursday. And one of those major bugs was the build mode being really laggy on rental lots. And it seems like it's improved, but when I built this, it was unbearable. So I built it as a regular residential lot and then swapped it to a rental at the end. And I had a whole bunch of issues with that too. Of course, as per usual, freezes are kind of buggy in this game. I'm talking about like the trim that goes on top of walls. You can see me adding a couple bits of it in right now. That's just always been glitchy. It always tries to place in the wrong place. Like sometimes it has visual glitches where it becomes like flat. I don't know how to describe this, but it's supposed to be kind of three-dimensional and it'll at times have these weird bugs where it just becomes like completely flat against the wall, almost like it's painted on instead of like built on. So I was having a bunch of problems with that at the end and I was trying to fix it before I put it on the gallery and it's just it, everything kept happening. <laughs> I kept trying to fix this stuff and it kept not wanting to be fixed and it was so annoying. So if you've been here wondering like, wow, why hasn't Kayla posted the Nightmare Legacy in a couple weeks? This is why. I wanted to finish the build first, but then the build, the build didn't want to be finished. So it took a long time to get through it, but we made it through. And now you can kind of see a little bit better what I was going for with the building. I wanted to have four individual houses that were very different in color scheme and style, but all attached to each other. And I'm building this on a 40 by 30 lot in Brindleton Bay. This is normally an empty lot in Brindleton Bay. It's kind of down by the lounge area, if you're familiar with that world. It's kind of down by the lounge, if you're familiar with that world. I thought it worked out really well for this lot because it was wide enough, but it also had like kind of a big driveway area, so it felt like it made sense for this style of build. I actually probably could have fit an additional house on this lot too and had five, but I decided against it because I wanted to have a parking lot. Obviously, you don't need a parking lot in The Sims 4. It's, it doesn't 
doesn't matter. There are no cars. Your subs can't drive. But I liked the look of it. I thought it was kind of cool to have some fake cars parked out there. And then I used the parking lot also to put the dumpster in and like a little bike rack and a couple other things like that. All four of these houses have tiny little courtyards in the front and then backyards in the back. And I actually opened up all the backyards. They all have their own individual yard that's styled differently and fits their house and fits their needs. But I left like a pathway in between them. I didn't close it off with gates or anything because what I wanted to do is have all of the Sims kind of frequent each other's yards. I think normally you probably wouldn't want that in a townhouse sort of situation. But in this case, with how I'm planning on playing, all of the other neighbors are my Sims. Like it's my Sims brother, my Sims cousin. Like I'm okay with them using granny's backyard. I think that's kind of fun to be honest. So I made it open on purpose. And here's the other problem. So I just discussed how I built this like for granny and for the uncles. You know how I mentioned earlier that I've been playing on short lifespan? Yeah, so here's the thing. <laughs> My Sims only have one set of grandparents left. The Sims that live here are gonna be on the left side, this like far left house that I'm kind of picking windows for right now. My legacy challenge Sim, her mom is dead. So like the previous generation of my legacy, they have already passed away, unfortunately. Her wife though, still has living parents. And I don't know if any of you watched that generation style growing together series that I posted here on YouTube back last year, or I guess it was earlier this year. Oh my God, <laughs> there was three expansion packs this year. But if you watched that, you might remember August and their wife, Jasmine. Those were the Sims that I did a whole series playing growing together with. And then they had two twin children. Their names were April and Arthur. Well, April married my legacy challenge Sim. So I kind of like merged my two Let's Plays and miraculously, August and Jasmine, those parents are not dead yet. So we do still have living grandparents, but again, it's short lifespan. So they're not gonna be living for very long. I would like them to be, but I am realistic about this. They're not gonna make it much longer. <laughs> we might have like a few days. Sims are only elders for like six days on a short lifespan. So it, it comes quick. <laughs> <laughs> they disappear fast, but I still liked the idea of them living here with us It's just that I built this whole thing for them to probably live here for like a couple days in game and then die So was it worth it? I don't know. It's gonna be cool though in the meantime So in order I know I'm working on like a fire escape right now But there's four houses in a row the far one on the left. That's kind of purple. That's the one for my let's play That's where my sims are going to live the one next door to them is where their brother is going to live This doesn't matter to you if you haven't seen the series, but if you have silver is going to live there <laughs> His name is Silver Bell, and he is my Bell family legacy heir's brother. <laughs> so he's gonna live next door to us. He has a kid, and I like for him to have another one. So I decorated that one for him and his family. And then kind of continuing down to the right, the other middle unit is where the grandparents are going to live. I tried to decorate that one as though the grandkids were gonna spend a lot of time there. I don't know if they actually will, but I put like a playroom there. They've got some toys around the place. I was just trying to make it seem like a really nice, lovely, inviting grandparents' house. And then and on the far right side is the other Sims brother. I have a couple, there's two Sims that I've been playing with and they both have brothers who are gonna live here. And then again, unfortunately, just one set of their parents will live here because the other one's parents are already dead. So hopefully that kind of gives you an idea of what I was going for with this. I realize what I just said is very confusing, especially if you haven't seen the videos, but if you haven't, don't worry about it. Just ignore everything I just said. All you need to know is that it's a house for a big family. A bunch of extended family is gonna all live here on this one lot. As far as gameplay goes, I don't really know how that's gonna work out. Full transparency, I plan on testing that out in a minute <laughs> when we start playing with these sims again. So tomorrow I'm gonna post the next episode of this Let's Play and like move in and set everything up and then we're gonna kind of see how this goes. <laughs> I don't really know what to expect. Obviously my sims are gonna have to be the landlord. I don't really know if I want to be a landlord. It's hard because I don't, I don't want to think about it as though they are landlords, right? Like I don't want them to be charging ridiculous amounts of rent money to their parents and siblings. In an ideal world, I'd like to pretend that they all just own these places outright themselves and they aren't paying rent to anybody because obviously there isn't like a third party landlord or anything. If it doesn't go well, we could have a third party landlord. I would be okay with that. But for now, I'm, I'm okay with being the landlord myself and then just pretending that I'm not a landlord. Like sure, maybe my mom's water heater broke and I'm gonna go help her fix it and I might be the landlord so it's my job to do so but I'm gonna try and pretend that I'm doing it because 
I'm related to her and I want to help her is kind of the idea. And I'll probably charge them rent, but maybe just enough to cover the cost of the daily rental unit tax, which is 50 simoleons a day. I'm not trying to make money off of this. I, I just want them to live with me. <laughs> I just want the story of my Sims family living here. I don't care to charge them. I, I just want it for the vibes. But with all of that being said, we've actually introduced the build now, so we can start working on the interior. My Sims are gonna live on the far left unit, and I tried to make it really cute and colorful in there. I went for a lot of like pretty pink colors and pretty purples and stuff. I used the windows from the wedding pack, which I know, <laughs> as soon as you mention the wedding pack, everybody's like, oh, yikes. But they have some really nice swatches. I loved that sort of purpley color, and so I used those out here. I wasn't really sure how I wanted to do the yards because I knew that I wanted to have very individual styles in each person's area. I liked the idea of there being different landscaping in all of them. And maybe I was overthinking this a little bit, <laughs> but I was going back and forth a lot on what I should put in the front front because in front of the fence, there's like a little one tile wide gap where I can put flowers. And I didn't know if I should have them all be the same or if they should be different. So I tried a bunch of different options. I ended up settling on different interior yards, but the same in that little one tile gap across all four of them. I also went back and forth on whether or not I should have them be the same path, like stepping stones. Cause again, I wanted to have these all be like individual separate houses, but also realistically, they probably would have the same sidewalk. Like it, it would be strange to have different sidewalks here. While I'm working on this, let's just chat for a second though. Sometimes I like to use these speed builds almost like little mini podcasts. It's a good time for a life update. Cause I can't always tell you guys like big exciting life drama in the middle of my, you know, Stanley Humphrey rags to riches video, but in this case, we've got time to chat. So here's what I have been dealing with this week. Number one, I'm sick. Not good, not thriving. <laughs> My throat actually is killing me right now. It's been a rough couple days. I, I've been feeling very not well. I think I'm fine. I'm just like, you know, not 100%. The bigger issue is the cats. So as many of you know, I found a bunch of cats in a sewer. <laughs> I adopted two of them after I like fostered them and their mom for a long time. I've posted some videos specifically about my sewer cats. If you want to go back and watch and hear like the full story. But the exciting update is that they got spayed and neutered in the past couple weeks. The vet wanted to wait until they were six months old to do the surgery. So we did it like the second they turned six months old, or at least when we thought they would turn six months old. We weren't sure when they were born exactly, but we had like a rough guess because they were about five weeks when we found them. Well, they had their spay and neuter surgeries. Sunny got spayed two weeks before shrimp got neutered because they had more openings. She healed totally fine. She's, she's good. It's been two weeks. Shrimp got neutered on Monday. And this is where the big drama comes in. So a lot of cats have this problem, but sometimes when one of the other cats in the house goes to the vet, they come home and they smell different. And then the cat doesn't recognize them anymore. So poor shrimp, when he got neutered, he comes home from his surgery and his sister hated him. <laughs> she was like hissing at him. She was growling. She didn't recognize him. So I had to keep them separate for a couple days. And it was like a whole thing. At this point, it's been a few days. They're totally fine. Like things are normal again. They like slept together last night. Like everything's totally fine. But for a couple days there, I was so stressed out. And the other issue is that poor Sunny, she's been having some like stress problems. I think it's related to her surgery. Like when she came home from the surgery, she was sort of like obsessively scratching her neck. She thankfully didn't touch her stitches, but she was scratching her neck so bad that she had a bald spot. So I took her to the vet for that. The poor thing had to go to the vet three times in two weeks, but the vet was like, okay, I'm pretty sure it's just stress, like because she's been through a, a lot with the surgery. They also tested her for ringworm, negative, thankfully no ringworm, but they gave me some medicine for her. My cat is on anxiety medicine. <laughs> It's it's like a supplement. It's a calming supplement called Zilkeen, but my cat is on anxiety meds. So like, honestly, relatable, I get it. And she also got given some like, it's like a foam cream thing, mousse. It's called a mousse to put on the spot where she kept scratching. So she's fine. Like she stopped scratching, it's working. It was, I think just like related to the surgery, which makes sense. Again, when you're a tiny kitten, having surgery is very stressful. It's stressful for anybody, but especially for like a little tiny cat who doesn't understand. But that's why I was so worried when Shrimp came home and she didn't recognize him and she was like scared and hissing and, and stuff. I was like, is she gonna start scratching again? Like I've, I've just been really worried about the cats this week. So it's been kind of a whole ordeal. The good news is they're fine. Like she's not scratching again. They're fine. They get along again. Like everything's okay. And then she had to go to the vet again a third time just to get her stitches checked after it had been two weeks. They healed fine. She's totally fine. It did make me laugh though, because the vet was like, oh, she's good. She's cleared to return to normal activity. <laughs> 
when in my head I was like, little Sunny, she decided that two weeks ago. As far as she is concerned, her activity has been normal for two weeks straight. She was kind of sleepy the day of and the day after her spay, but like ever since then, you would think that nothing happened. Like she, <laughs> she decided that she was fine and she decided that things were normal again. And then the other big cat drama, I have had five cats have surgery in the past couple months. That sounds like a lot and really bad, but they're not all my cats anymore, okay? So I have a cat named Snap who's older, she's 15. She had a dental surgery a few months ago. Obviously my two kittens had their spay and neuters. I found their mom in a sewer, we got her spayed, and their brother we also got neutered. My parents adopted the mom and the other sibling. So in total, five cats all had surgery. Guess what? Four of them returned home from the vet with a certificate of bravery. The only one who did not get given a certificate of bravery was Frankie, the mom of the kittens. Everybody else got one. They gave me like a little handwritten, like they wrote their name on their certificate for all of the cats except the mom. So I'm over here wondering like, what did she do? <laughs> what happened? And Frankie had her spay on the same day that Snap had her dental thing. So it wasn't like a day of the week. They weren't like, you know, out of them. A couple different vets have done the different surgeries and all of the other cats still got certificates. So what the hell would happen to Frankie? Why did she get a certificate? I would argue that out of all of the cats, the mom who had kittens by herself in a sewer for five weeks, she's the bravest of them all. I found this poor kitten in a sewer with her babies. <laughs> she's brave. Where, where is her certificate? I wonder if she was like kind of mean to them. <laughs> and that's why. I guess I can see it happening. She, she is a sewer cat, so <laughs> I get it. She's very friendly, but vets are strangers and therefore scary. So I get it. But it did kind of make me laugh thinking about what could poor Frankie have done to not get a certificate. Okay. Anyway, back to the build for a second. I'm, I'm done talking about cats for now, for now. At this point in the build, you might be noticing, oh, look at how cute these bedrooms are. We have this really cute, adorable purple and pinkish colored bedroom. We have a cute nursery, all for my Sims kids and my legacy challenge. Yeah, this is actually not cute or fun because you know what happened next? My game crashed and I lost all the progress in both of those bedrooms. I could tell my game was about to crash, so I real quick took a screenshot so I could like recreate it afterward when I came back. But this was strike two for the cursed build because keep in mind, at this point, my whole PC has already died. <laughs> And now my game crashed all on the same day. So I had to take a second. I went back. I had to go and like work downstairs instead of upstairs. I did put the upstairs stuff back, but I, I won't make you watch me furnish those rooms twice because I basically furnished them again. But when I show you the tour, the rooms might be like slightly different in those two bedrooms upstairs just because I had to redo it. I was really proud of this townhouse though. It's exactly what I wanted out of this because my Sims have been living in a townhouse kind of like this for a while in the Let's Play. And so I wanted to build something that had similar vibes but just had more space because we've got a whole bunch of kids. They've got a robot, like a servo lives with them. <laughs> so we, we sort of had a need for some more stuff and some more space. I, I was squeezing all of our kids into just one bedroom. So I was really looking to try and get some more space for us in here. And this is exactly what we needed. We still have all the things that I love the most about the old house. Like we still have a rooftop. We still have all that sort of stuff, but there's just more room. And then we also have like, you know, the family living here as well. I liked it too, because I kind of tried to keep the color scheme and some of the furniture similar to the house that I've been living in. And I can link that video on the end card, the one of the current house before we move into this one. But I think it makes sense that the Sims would have sort of a similar vibe and similar furniture in their new house, because obviously in real life, you'd bring it with you. <laughs> but in this case, I, I just tried to keep similar things. Couple other highlights of this unit. We have obviously like a small kitchen dining area. There's a living room downstairs, but in the basement, I kind of stole some space from the neighbor's house. House, which maybe isn't the most realistic thing in the world, but like I, I can steal a couple tiles from the brother's room <laughs> for me to use. So I did put a staircase into the basement and in that basement, I've got kind of like a robotics room because I wanted to have that big robotics machine because my Sim obviously is into robots, but it takes up so much space and it didn't fit anywhere. So I put the robots down there. I also put like the water heater and, and those sorts of utility items down in the basement and we have laundry in the basement. I've been really brave and playing with laundry in my legacy challenge recently, which is big for me because normally I avoid any and all chores in my Sims houses. <laughs> but I've been doing laundry recently, so I gave them 
space for that. And you might have noticed also that upstairs I stole a whole bunch of extra space from the brothers unit and I tried to make it into an office. So it's not ideal because it has no windows, but I don't think it's that big of a deal. I wanted to have an office space because both of these sims went to university. One studied programming and then one is a writer. So they both need computers and they both need kind of room for their offices. So I wanted to have a dedicated office and I did that upstairs in some more area that I stole from the brother's apartment. Some people in my Twitch chat were kind of upset about that. They were like, this is so unrealistic. And it, yeah, yeah, but it's The Sims. <laughs> it's The Sims and it's my legacy build, so I'll do what I need to do, okay? I'm gonna have to do a lot of cheating for money if I'm gonna be the landlord of this place. I'm still not 100% sure if I'm okay with that or not. <laughs> I don't really know how I'm feeling about it. If I need to, I can just cheat our money back down to zero for the next generation, like, it'll be fine. And thankfully, both of the Sims who live here make a lot of money. Obviously, we're a writer, so we've got, like, royalties coming in, but they both are level 10 in their careers already because we had, like, the university bonuses. So we make like thousands of simoleons a day, which is helpful when you're trying to pay for a thing like this. <laughs> I don't usually do money cheats in this legacy. I haven't cheated for money a single time in this whole 11 generation legacy, so it feels kind of weird. But this might be like a last hurrah, because honestly, my sims have too much money, so after this I might cheat it all away. <laughs> Whoever the next generation sim ends up being, I'm, I might make them have nothing. It's just more fun. I, I prefer for my sims to have to like actually work for money. I, I have a better time doing that. It sounds bad, like, oh, for my sims to suffer, but I, I do. I think it's better that way. I kind of find the sims boring when you have too much money. It just feels a little ridiculous to me to have my sims going to, like, their 9 to 5 job and, and making, like, 500 simoleons when they've got 50,000 in the bank. Like, why are you even going at that point? This is the kind of thing that you would only ever say in the sims. <laughs> I like it when my sims suffer. I want them to have less money, but it's, it's just how I feel. I don't know how many of you also feel that way. I know a lot of people only play sims with money cheats, but I I'm more of the type to do cheats for a house and like build an expensive house and then cheat my money back down to be low again and then have to work hard for bills. I'm not really one to just cheat and have money sitting around. If anything, I'm one to cheat money away <laughs> and have less money. I'll cheat their needs no problem. I'll teleport them, like that's fine by me. I just don't ever do money cheats really. We've moved on again to the outside though. I worked a little bit on the backyard and now I'm doing the parking lot. This is one of the other sort of unrealistic things that I have done because your sims definitely do not have enough space to pull into those parking spaces. There's like literally no way, no way they could park in those spaces. There's not enough road to drive and then turn, but thankfully it's the Sims, so you don't have to drive or turn or or have cars at all because it's not, they don't exist. <laughs> this is fake. I just like how it looks so much. I think it's so cool and so realistic to have that pretend parking lot. So I wanted to add it in anyway. If you've never seen this before and you're like panicking <laughs> seeing these cars and you're like, wait a minute, what's going on? These are just from debug. So there's like a cheat that you can type in in The Sims 4 to access all kinds of decor from the environment. That might be random bits of landscaping. It could be like the tree cage or like newspaper boxes, you know, all kinds of stuff like that. Or in this case, it could be cars. Because <laughs> when you're playing The Sims 4, you will see cars driving around in the environment. They just aren't actually driving. It's like a visual effect. And so you can get those fake cars, but they're just that, they're fake. They, you can't even click on them. They're kind of just there. So I'm really sorry if you got excited. <laughs> I'm sorry to break that news to you. I like how it looks, so I still used it. I did a couple other debug things out there too, which I'll show you when we get to the tour, but I put like a little bike rack because the new pack for rent comes with a debug bike rack. So I use that as well. There's a dumpster area. Area. We had like a section to have utilities like the AC boxes or whatever they're called And now I've gone back inside because I know I keep jumping around so much <laughs> This was actually another day altogether. This is I think day three at this point of this build But I'm working on the bedroom now. This is this is the primary bedroom upstairs It's very pink and very green much like the whole house is in total This unit is three bedrooms and three bathrooms There's two kids rooms one primary bedroom and then there's a bathroom on each floor including the basement So we've got Got space for all the sims to sleep. I, I know I mentioned I have a servo. <laughs> um, so the robot, I, I never gave her a bedroom. I probably should have and could have given
given Nina her own bedroom, but but when she sleeps, she just stands there and closes her eyes. So she doesn't need a bedroom and, and she can pretend the basement is her bedroom, okay? <laughs> it's not really decorated like that for her, but she can pretend. And there's a few things in here too that I'm probably gonna have to update and add on to once I'm actually playing in this house because I have a lot of like family memorabilia because my Sims have diplomas, we've got all these family photos, we've got collectibles, like all that sort of stuff. I'm gonna need to go back in and add them here. So a couple of the areas are a little bit plain. Not really, but like sometimes I would have put more clutter on the shelves, for example. And in this case, I didn't because I intend to put my clutter, like my snow globes or my frogs or, you know, whatever stuff I have, I'll put them on the shelves that way so I can have my own items in there. When I build for myself versus building for like a video or for you all, it's a very different process <laughs> because I have this intention to add in all of my family photos. And so I leave some blank walls or whatever, but I did put in the empty frames with the intention of adding in the photos in this house. So it kind of hopefully makes it a little bit more clear. I also obviously, given the fact that I'm building this for my Myself, I did not even try to limit packs. <laughs> a lot of times when I do builds for my YouTube channel, I'll, I'll try to not use too many packs. I definitely have my moments where I just go all out and use everything, but I'll often be like, you know what? I don't need to use a whole extra pack just to have one item. So I'll hold off on that. You know, I kind of have that mentality. In this case, because I built it for me, all bets are off. I probably used every single pack in this house. Because <laughs> keep in mind, on the gallery, this has all four units. I'm only showing you the furnishing of one, but on the gallery, there is four. So across those four houses, like everything, we've just got everything. I'll get into that and show you around the other units, but for now, we're just finishing up some final touches here in our unit. I'm doing the living room last. And this was probably the hardest room for me to furnish. I wasn't really sure what I wanted it to look like. I actually don't love that the walls are medium wall height either. I Part of the things that I like the most about our old house is that it was kind of small. Well, it was pretty small and it was also really cozy inside. And this one, I felt like the downstairs was almost too big. <laughs> I was like, wait, I have too much space. How do I fill it? So in this room, I kind of struggled the most with it. I ended up putting a big cozy living room area facing a TV and some bookshelves. We have a piano down down here. And I also chose at this point to swap around where the staircase went and kind of steal some space from my own unit. Cause I liked the idea of trying to separate the room a little bit and make it a bit smaller. And you're welcome to my Sims brother. Cause I am not stealing as much space from his apartment anymore. I still am stealing a little bit of space, <laughs> but I'm not stealing that much. And this basement kind of just became a catch all. Like I said, we have the laundry down here, but I also have the robotic stuff. There's a litter box. I kind of imagine myself using this space cause there's a bunch of open open floor space in here. I think I'll probably have my Sims do their school projects down here because they have enough room for it. If I end up wanting an easel or like any sort of other things like that, I'll use the basement for it. It's helpful to have those sort of like multi-purpose spaces in your Sims builds, especially because there's so many random giant items that are useful in this game. So it's, it's nice to have a place to just kind of throw them. <laughs> and then the last thing we're adding in down here is just that utility room that I talked about. I ended up putting in the water heater and the fuse box down here, but here's a little secret. I put the fake ones <laughs> in the new pack. It has a functional and non-functional water heater and fuse box. And I put the non-functional ones because I know myself. And when I'm trying to take care of these units, I'm probably already going to have my Sims grandparents revolting against them. I just know it. Like <laughs> there's no way that they don't. The last thing I need is more maintenance to take care of. So I put the fake ones just because I, I know, I know that I will not maintain it well enough. If I'm I'm gonna be the landlord, I'm gonna do a bad job. I have so many other priorities is the thing. I'm doing so many other things. So I, I can't be a landlord and those things. <laughs> I'm gonna do terribly. We, we're probably gonna have this, this landlord stint be short lived. I imagine myself like selling it and then just moving in as a tenant, but. <laughs> I don't know. I like to experiment and try so we can see what happens, but we are just about done with the build finally, or at least this part of the build, this one single unit of four. <laughs> I'm putting in some finishing touches down here in the living room. I did a couple weird things with the rug. I, I couldn't find one that fit well enough. So I, I used a small one and then tiled it three times. I've got a lot of pink and green and peach colors happening here. A lot of people in my Twitch chat 
hated the couch in this living room is because it's sort of like dirty. <laughs> it's like a dirty garage sale couch that you can get from City Living, but I used it in here because I like the color so much. People were mad that it looked dirty, but I'm just choosing to ignore that part. I'm pretending that it looks clean and not dirty. And now the last final thing that we're gonna furnish, we're back outside again for a second because we're going onto the rooftop. There is a whole extra floor up on the roof that you can access through the fire escape. And up here, I put a garden because my Sims robot needs it. I know that sounds so weird, but it's true. We have a hot tub, there's fairy lights, there's a card table. Like I, I really went all out and just put all kinds of stuff. There's even a telescope because you never know. They might need some danger in their lives. <laughs> Maybe I want to get struck by a meteor. I don't know. I like this space too on the roof because it's also kind of a flex space. I can use this for pretty much anything I need it to be. And because it's on the roof, I didn't assign this as being my Sims stuff. I left it as a shared space technically in game because I like the idea of the other neighbors, my Sims family being up here and using it. Like it would actually be really fun for me if all of the cousins could come up here and play games together. So in an ideal world, they'll autonomously use all of the outside stuff, but we'll see how it works. <laughs> and we are officially now done with the entire build. That is the entire house that my Sims are gonna live in. Now what I wanna do is pop back into the game and give you a tour of all of the other units. Okay, this is inconvenient. <laughs> I was supposed to open my game. Now the EA app won't work. I'm so sick of the EA app. It's so annoying. It, I just, why? Okay, no, oh, are we back? No, <laughs> okay. No, okay, the game, wait, the game opened. Never mind. sorry, we're good. False alarm, everything's fine. I just don't trust them. The EA app, it breaks constantly. I, I'm justified in not trusting it. Okay, so I built this in Brindleton Bay, and like I was saying, it's over here on this 40 by 30 lot. Oh my god. Okay, rent bug. They claim they fixed this. Um, I don't know if it is actually fixed or not, but it, it'll be fine. I'm not gonna live in this save anyway. But it's on this tail's end 40 by 30 lot over here, and this is kind of what all of the separate units look like. Um, yeah, that's a lot of rent money, huh? <laughs> They're all about four stars, and it looks like most of them cost like 40,000 in furnishings. And this is what the finished build looks like. I'm gonna real quick hide those lines because it's kind of distracting. So in order, this is my unit. This is Silver, my Sims brother's unit. This is the grandparents' unit. And then this one is going to belong to my other Sims brother. His name is Arthur. Over here on the outside, we've got a couple cute things. I've got this parking lot outside. I also, whoa. <laughs> I also put a mailbox down here and they've got a little gate that you can access the trash can from. I really like a couple of the details out here, like these AC units and the wall trellis. On the far side, I definitely did the most over here because it's it's mine. <laughs> so I gave myself the most to work with. I really like how this fire escape looks. I think it's kind of cool and realistic. They have a ladder and then there's an actual fire escape to the roof. This is the finished rooftop, by the way. Just a couple little skill building game type of items for us to use. Ping pong on the roof feels wildly dangerous. Like <laughs> the ping pong ball just will probably go flying off the whole building. But thankfully it's the Sims, so that doesn't happen. Uh, around the back over here, we have our own backyard yard and I kind of extended it like I, I stole some extra space so it's bigger than the other ones but it's mine so I'll do what I want <laughs> and I put some kids play stuff back here we have like a toddler slide and we've got a little grill and table I even put hopscotch the new hopscotch stuff and I'll get to these outside ones in a minute but I want to show you our unit first so when you first walk up here it takes you into like a little entryway space we've got a spot for our phone and keys you can get upstairs from here there is one bathroom downstairs and then we have the joint dining room and kitchen area. We've got a couple appliances, like we have the stand mixer and a kettle, big, big, big dining table, and also a giant cat tree. I'm realizing that I think I forgot to put a cat food bowl. How did I even manage that? Okay, well, it just put a food bowl down like right here if you wanted to play in it. And then off to the right, this is where the living room is. That's what I was talking about with the like weird layered rugs. I don't know. I think it looks okay and kind of stripey, but it, it takes some, you have to kind of play pretend a little bit. <laughs> but they've got a nice fireplace. This is a TV actually. It's like a frame TV. They have their piano back here and then this staircase through this door is how you access the basement and this basement has that kind of like multi-purpose room we also have the laundry down here I used a pink washer and dryer which is kind of fun and then when you come back around and you go upstairs up here we just have kind of like a plain hallway this is that office I was talking about you can kind of see how I stole the office space from the other unit <laughs> I like cut into my brother's unit and made it my own but I wanted to have this cute little joint office we have the primary bedroom and they've got an ensuite bathroom 
bathroom. This is the little nursery. And then this is my favorite kids room I have ever made. I'm kind of mad that I had to make it twice because my game crashed, but this is the kids room. I think this color scheme looks so cute together. I really, really liked it. Technically my Sim is actually a child and a toddler but they're gonna age up fast. It's short lifespan, so it'll be fine. And that is our entire unit. That's the whole left side. Moving on to the next one. This middle unit belongs to my Sim's brother and he is a single dad of currently one kid, but I wanna have him adopt another one. His unit is a totally different color scheme. It's very red and blue in here. So you walk into a small living room. He's got a nice TV and kind of like a cute entryway. He has laundry as well right here in this little nook. And then he's got kind of a cool galley style kitchen right here that leads you into the back where the dining room Room is. He also has a huge bathroom downstairs, but it's the only bathroom in the house because I stole a lot of his space upstairs. <laughs> um, in his backyard, he has a fire pit and he's got some little planter boxes. You can kind of see what I mean by how I left them open on purpose because I would like for all of the Sims to free roam between them all. I want to see them and see them using stuff, so I'm okay with it being open like this. If you were playing here and had like strangers living next door, I wouldn't blame you for closing it in, but for my purposes, I kind of want it to be open. And then when you go up the stairs, case in Silver's apartment. There's like a little hallway right here. We have a little teeny tiny half bathroom. We've got this kind of cute kids bedroom. I liked the rainbow vibes. I got a lot of questions about this rug. It's actually from high school years, but it's sized up and in kind of a fun rainbow swatch. And then Silver also has his bedroom over here. Very similar to the downstairs color scheme, but I kind of liked it. Moving on again <laughs> over to the right. This is where the grandparents are going to live. When you walk into their apartment, they've got a cute little entryway right here. They've got kind of like a chest nook inside this bay window. They have a huge living room area. And I put some toys down here. Cause again, I liked the idea of pretending the grandkids came over here to play. They have a nice dining room space right here with some spots for family photos. They've got a piano, they've got some pet bowls, and they have a huge kitchen because one of these Sims is a chef. So I wanted to do that, but I did kind of use cheap appliances because I knew that I was the one spending the money. <laughs> So I didn't want it to be too expensive. And then in their backyard, they also have a grill and like a little table right here. I liked this flooring. I've actually never used this before. This is from Cottage Living and I don't like the default swatch that much with the yellow stone and the pink flowers, but I think it looks kind of cool in this white swatch. But anyway, back inside, they have a little bathroom downstairs. I liked these two tiles together. They don't really match exactly, but if you use your imagination a bit, they look pretty good together. And then upstairs, they've got a rat and some bookshelves. They have a little playroom for the kids. And I also put like a cool skylight in here. This is like a kid's guest room because I liked the idea of the grandkids sleeping over. I don't know if I actually will do that in reality, but it's fun to play pretend. And then back down this way, we have one more bathroom and then the primary bedroom for them in this house. And we finally have one last unit. This one belongs to my other Sims brother and he is engaged to Alexander Goth. So my Sim Arthur is getting with Alexander Goth and they're gonna live here together. So I kind of tried to make it Goth house inspired. You'll see on the inside what I'm talking about. It kind of like looks like the Goth family's house. I put up a picture of Bella Goth. It looks pretty terrible sized up, but it's okay. I'm using it anyway. They've got a really nice big open living room space with some bookshelves. They have a little bathroom down here and kind of like a small office space. We've got a huge dining room and kitchen. Again, really channeling the goth family with this. <laughs> and then in their backyard, they've got a telescope and a hot tub. Nothing really too fancy out here, but we've got some small things. And then upstairs, just a little hallway and then a couple of bedrooms. So this bedroom is like the primary bedroom. Down here, we have a bedroom for what will be their kids. I wanted to have like twin toddlers. They don't have any kids yet, but they will. <laughs> and then this room, um, this one, so <laughs> I don't know how to explain this. This is a, a note for anyone. If you don't watch my legacy challenge, don't worry. You can just click off the video right now. You can just leave. If you do watch my legacy challenge, I owe you an apology because if you remember, <laughs> I merged the saves. I, I brought my legacy Sims into the save that I was playing growing together in because I had been 10 generations. I was having a lot of lag problems. So I wanted to kind of start fresh in a new save. So I brought all the Sims over and just like cheated relationships back and kind of set things back up. Um, in doing that, there is a Sim that I forgot to bring. I know, I know. It's really bad. It's really, really bad. Uh, his name is Gary and he's my Sim Dory's brother. So my legacy heir, Dory, she has two brothers. One is named Silver 
he lives here. <laughs> the other one is her half-brother, and that's why I forgot about him, because her parents, one of them had a kid before she met my sim, before they started dating, so he was a lot older than the kids that they had together, so by the time that Dory was growing up, he had moved out long ago, his name was Gary, and he was long gone. And because of that, I forgot to bring him to the new save. So he just, Gary does not exist in, in this world, so I felt really guilty and I made him a room. The problem is, he is not related to this sim. <laughs> this is like the wrong side of the family. He doesn't, he's not related to the sim who's gonna live here, but I felt bad, so I gave him a room in the house. Um, he also has a kid, so I will fix it. I'll bring him into the, to the save, I'll, I'll get it fixed, but yeah, um, my apologies. If you noticed that and you told me and I didn't notice, I'm really sorry, but no one that I saw ever ever remembered Gary. <laughs> Nobody brought him up. My whole Twitch chat was like, wait, who's Gary? <laughs> so I think a lot of us forgot, but I'm gonna fix it. It's gonna be fine. And that is the entire build. On the gallery, it's called Legacy Townhouses. It costs like 311,000 simoleons. And unsurprisingly, it uses like a million packs, like all the packs. I'm not kidding. It's real bad, <laughs> real, real bad. But I built this for me. So I'm sorry, but also not really that sorry. Okay, I think we are officially done with the build now. So on that note, I'm gonna end this video right here. Thank you for watching. If you made it this far, I am very impressed. And tomorrow I'm gonna post the next actual gameplay episode playing with these Sims. So if you haven't seen it yet, now is kind of a good time to start because we're kind of like starting a new generation. In a legacy challenge, each generation is kind of like a new let's play in itself. So now's a good time to start watching if you haven't already. I'll link it for you down below. Don't worry about watching the whole thing. If you wanna go back from the beginning, you totally can, but like all those sims are dead <laughs> and they don't matter anymore, so it's fine if you don't. But I will see you all tomorrow, okay? Bye, everybody. I'm not kidding. Like, I've got sims that I played with literally three years ago in real life. You don't need to know their names. I don't even know some of their names, so really don't worry. <laughs> if you want to watch the recent ones, that's fine, but you don't have to go back to the beginning. You can, but you don't have to.